Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. You see, remember that uh, car we sort of melted in the solution there? Let's do something with it. First thing to do is just go ahead and take it apart. It shouldn't be too hard at this point. Then I'm going to cut a couple of little notches on the side there and snap it in half. That way I can have it kind of buckled in the middle. So in order to keep this simple, I'm just going to go ahead and use a tea light for the lighting effect there. But um, I need it to go through the car, so go ahead and pop the cover off of that and then drill a hole in the bottom of the car to you know, get the light to fit through. But then, depending on how your light is like sitting on there, you're going to need to carve like a little trench so that the lead wire coming off of the light has somewhere to go. And then you can just hot glue that right on. And figure out how exactly you want to do your parts. I pretty much just broke this apart wherever it was already weak enough to just come apart by hand. Then take the little rotary tool and drill a bunch of holes in the different parts to make some bullet holes. And I did want to keep some of the windshield, so I went ahead and clipped a little piece of that off of the plastic. But I'm going to cover it with some of this um, business card holder stuff. That way it looks like I had a cage over it. And like I mentioned before, you can just go ahead and grab the edge of it there with some pliers or cutters, whatever, and then just pull it right off. It's not actually attached on that very well, just sort of crimped. I decided I did not like the tires that are on this car because they're, they're too small. They're just like basic car tires, so I went ahead and popped those off. And went through my little box of parts there and found a few that I liked. You can use tires from like a larger car or like a truck or something. You don't have to have 3D printed stuff. In fact, I decided to go ahead and do just that. I used two tires from a bigger vehicle. I'm not sure what it was from. And two 3D printed ones just because why not. Go ahead and take your piece of mesh and then wrap that around the windshield. You could also use, um, I think it's called fabric tape. You put it on the wall before you drywall. Hard to explain that. I'll have some next time I do windshields. You'll see. And of course, drill any holes you want to have. And now we can grab some hobby wire and start setting these parts up. All you really got to do is figure out where you want the part to be, drill a hole for the wire to go into the frame of the car, and then use one of the other holes that you've already drilled into your parts, and then you can just super glue everything together. These really don't need to be exact at this point, they just need to be like the right length basically, just to because you're going for an explosion look, so you want them to be out far enough that it looks like it's flying off the car, but not so far that it's goofy. So the best method there is to just cut the wire a little longer than you're going to need. Go ahead and glue it to the part first, and then put it on the car, and you can always push the wire through as far as you need to and trim off the excess, or hold it up to the car and then cut off the excess and glue it on, however you want to do it. Just give yourself enough room to work with. Now this wire is super, super soft too, so I mean, if you wanted to, you know, change it later, you thought it was sticking out too far, you can always bend a little crimp into it. That would take up some of the space. Just don't stress. It's supposed to be fun. If you're wondering what that can of white powder is in the background, I am super impatient, so I put baking soda over the crazy glue to make it set really quick. Or at least the outside of it sets, that way I don't get super glue all over my hands. So I lost the roof to this car when I dumped all the, the garbage out into the garbage and um, kind of need that. But since I don't have it, I'm going to use a piece of the, uh, the thing that was around the, the tea light there. As long as it looks kind of like a domed roof piece, it's fine. So at this point, you may notice that your car is a little wobbly on the base. And if that is the case, you can go ahead and squirt some hot glue around the opposite side to balance it out. But do mind where that hot glue is dripping. Don't get it on your switch, which is exactly what I did. That was kind of uh, irritating. As for putting other accessories on this thing, I, I mean, I guess you could, but it's an explosion marker, so not really necessary, and I don't want to use my nice 3D printed parts for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. I just went ahead and painted that white piece of plastic purple to match the rest of the car. And I decided it was too bright of a purple, so I got some black on the brush and just went back over it. And then I painted the base black, and I brushed the edges and put a couple spots black to make it look a little charred. Nothing super scientific, just kind of whatever looks right to you. I also painted all of the wires and those two wheels that were gray, I painted those black. And then anywhere there's like a big super glue or hot glue connection, I painted that too. 
just so that if it's seen, it doesn't stand out quite as much. Then I painted around the chassis with some metallic silver stuff. It's kind of like a shiny gray. Again, not super important, just in case you do happen to see it. And I took a little bit of barn red and painted that around to kind of act as rust. Didn't bother to clean my brush in between any of this stuff. Now we can take a cotton ball and shred that up and start stuffing it in there. You are going to want to have the light on for this to make sure that you're not putting too much cotton anywhere that's going to block the light. And the goal here with the cotton ball is mostly to hide the wires more than anything. Um, you can fluff it up and squish it in certain places or however you want to do whatever looks good to you. My biggest concern is hiding those support wires that are holding all the parts out. As long as you do that, anything else you do is totally fine. Once you got it pretty close, you can use something like a little dental pick or tweezers or a needle, anything really fine, just to like sort of pick at it to get rid of any of the clumps. And to make it stick real well, I just hosed it down with hairspray. To add the dingy color to the smoke that a car fire would have, where it's like a lot of black and brown, maybe a little bit of yellow or something in there, some grays, you would take it outside and spray paint it with those colors. I uh, obviously can't spray paint this because the explosion is right in the middle of all the parts. So what I'm going to do instead is just use that super thick wash I made the other day. That will spray through the airbrush just fine and it does the job. I tried playing with different lights and different light settings and messing with the camera and everything to try and show you what it looks like in real life, but didn't really succeed. You'll just have to take my word for it, it looks great in real life. The only thing I'm really not too happy about is how dim the light actually is. It would be a lot brighter if I had used one of my good quality lights, but I wanted to keep it simple using the tea light here, and the tea light does make a really good base. So maybe stick two or three tea lights in there. But for something that would have otherwise just been trash, that's a pretty good wreck slash explosion marker. Certainly better than just turning your cars on their side. And of course, if at any point this starts to bother you because something doesn't seem right or whatever, it's all just fluff and springs. You can constantly readjust it even well after you're done with it. I mean, six months later, you're like, oh, I want it smaller or this or that. You know, you can still smush stuff around. Not a problem at all. So there you go, guys. A fun little explosion marker for your Gaslands games or anything else you want to use the techniques for. Of course, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.